guys, so I'm here to do a quick video on um, things that people need to do to prepare for placements if they're in social work. Um, I'm not sure what it's like in other states but in or in other countries, but in Sydney, um, before you graduate with a bachelor's degree in social work, you've got to do a thousand hours worth of placement hours um, before you can graduate. You do your first one in your second year, no, third year, I think. Gee, I don't remember. I think third or second year. Um, you do 480 hours and then the last place. So it's actually more than that. It's 1,080 hours because then you do 600 in your final year and that's your final placement and then after that you graduate. So um, I think for me, placement was really annoying because um, I felt like, if we're having to do 1,080 hours worth of work, we should at least get paid a dollar per hour or something. So at the end of the um, placement, we're gonna get at least $1,008 because we're gonna have to make our own way there. We're gonna have to finance ourselves to do that. We're gonna have to provide ourselves with lunch where we're at work and stuff like that. You know, so I felt like um, um, it was annoying, seriously, <laughs> because we were, we were not getting paid and the hours were so much. And I think what I found as well is with most of these placements, um, people are just so busy, they don't even have time for you as a student, you know? So, um, especially for someone that knows nothing about like what it's like in the workplace for a social worker, I think um, you need to go in prepared because you don't, it's not like school. When you go into placement, it's like, there's another, it's a worker that you're going to be working with. So you have to also go in with your ideas and what you expect of them in the time that you're doing your placement you can't just rock up like you know as you would with le when you're going to lectures or to tutorials because you always obviously go in there to be taught but in placement obviously it's part of your learning experience but then there's a lot of expectations there like you've got to go prepared knowing what you want out of it and um, what your ex expectations are um, I think for me yeah I just wanted to get it over and done with really but luckily I had all my supervisors were pretty good. They were actually interested in the field and they were keen to help and you know it was easy to work with them and stuff like that. So I was lucky with that. But I think for everyone else, um, before you start placement, you've got to prepare what you expect of them. I think what I found since I've been working as well is like we don't really get as much exposure as we need before we get into the workplace. So obviously the placement is an, um, something that we need to take advantage of more rather than consider it annoying like I did. Um, you know, there are some supervisors that don't think we're ready to actually start dealing with our own clients and stuff. But I would say maybe for your first placement, it's okay if you don't deal with clients directly and have your own clients. Um, it's fair enough because it's your first placement. You can just tag along and observe. The supervisor do her work but then when it gets to the second placement i think you should have your own clients just so you you're actually on site and you're actually doing things a social worker would you know what i mean so then by the time you're ready to work you would have had as much um, exposure as possible and you would know what to expect when you start working even if it's a different role you end up taking when you start working um, you would still have some basic idea around because I tell you what, um, all the stuff that we're taught, I use like the theory and stuff like that. I mean, it's still relevant in the workplace, but it's totally different. Like, it's totally different to the experience you would have when you start working. Obviously, when you start working, you would learn a lot more than you would just in a classroom. But um, I think, yeah, taking advantage of placement. So I think things that you need to like make a list of what you expect depending on where you're going to work you know if you go somewhere and they're not making you do any social work related stuff and you're only doing like because there's different organizations that have different policies and different expectations of the social workers that they have so if you get it i know there's a lot of factors that comes into play as well sometimes there isn't really any way you want but no matter what area you go into just try and get as much exposure with your client with the clients that your supervisor works with and ask if you can get one client for yourself just so you can work with them 
and experience for yourself what it's like to be a social worker rather than tag along the whole time which is basically what I did because I was just like I can't wait to get this over and done with you know that kind of thing but I think if I had to do it again I would probably do these things you know so I think yeah um, most importantly try and get yourself as much exposure as possible I mean placement is like because the way I did my placement, I used a lot of my time to do my assignments and stuff like that because I used to do paid work at the same time doing placement and then going to uni. So it was crazy. I didn't have any time for myself. So at placement where um, on, during times where there was nothing really to do, I would just do my assignments and stuff like that. But um, I think, you know, planning, you know, usually for me, I did like four days a week of placement because I wanted to get it over and done it quickly. So I think um, you can plan in such a way that you have at least two days for a client that has been given to you to by your supervisor and the other two days you can use to do your assignments and then it can still count towards your placement hours so you can still get it over and done quickly but at the same time you are not missing the whole experience of being a student and always going in with questions as well like show interest in whatever you're doing at placement you know because for me my and gain more knowledge in the field through your placement, you know, rather than just tagging along wherever you go and just observing the whole time. I mean, it's still good to observe, like, in situations where, because, like, with my last placement, there was counseling sessions and stuff like that, which obviously my supervisor had built rapport with such people over a long period of time. So for something like that, I couldn't have a client where I can counsel them because I'm a student, you know, so which is fair enough. But when it comes to like making referrals for uh, services or uh, linking with other agencies and um, recommending services to clients, I think that was something that I was capable of as a student. So that was something that I should have taken advantage of. So that's something that I would encourage everyone, no matter, even if you're not doing social work, no matter what field you're, work, you're currently studying, um, use your um, student placement as um, an opportunity to explore the field more rather than can't wait to get your friend done with. <laughs> I mean, it's still okay to feel that way, but um, you're going to have to do the hours anyway, you know, so you might as well make good use of it. I hope this video was helpful. I decided to do this quickly after I just filmed the previous video, which I'll upload with this one as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I also get to say this for some reason. Bye.